I'm out here in the middle of the desert looking for Chuck Wallace uh, because we're going to explore one of their behaviors today. Uh, we're going to explore their dominance behavior or territorial behavior. Uh, they do this cute little thing when something encroaches in their environment and their space. Uh, they'll do like our frat guys here at ASU when something encroaches on their space, dominance and females, uh, they'll pump out some push-ups. Uh, it's a really cute behavior that I wanted to see in the wild and be able to document for you guys. Uh, but it's super hard to find them in the middle of a city. I mean, you literally see the plane flying past here. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and swing by Phoenix Herpetological Society to talk to my friend Isabel, who is a expert in everything reptile. Um, and she's going to show us some of her Chuck Wallace that she has in captivity. Uh, and we can kind of compare a captive Chuck Walla to a wild Chuck Walla, uh, which will be interesting in itself because captive Chuck Wallas have their own little box, their own little space without any other males. Uh, they have all of their females available to them and them only. Uh, so their dominance behaviors are a lot less dominant. They don't show it as much as the wild ones because the wild ones have to actually fend and show their dominance and block off their territory. Uh, so let's go ahead and head out to Phoenix Herpetological Society. Guys, we made it. We're here at the Phoenix Herpetological Society. Um, so the resident conservationist inside, Isabel, is gonna kind of give us a tour around, uh, as well as show us several different species of chuckwalla that all possess that push-up head bobbing behavior, uh, which again is territorial behavior. They're showing you, get out of my territory. Look, I'm a big buff man. You gotta get out of my area. Stay away from my females. Uh, so she's going to kind of show us uh, the enclosures as well so that we can look out for similar habitats out in the wild. Um, we are going to be focusing on one species though, which is the common chuckwalla, which is our resident species of iguanid here in the Sonoran Desert. Yeah, that's right. We have an iguana in the middle of the desert. It's amazing to me because usually when you think iguana, you think subtropical and tropical climates. So I just think it's so amazing. Um, I'm super excited to go in there and talk to her and get all this info for you guys. I got to change my shirt first though, because this is not appropriate. Uh, so bear with me and I'll meet you guys um, inside. I'm Isabel. Um, I work for Phoenix Herpetological Sanctuary. Um, and I've worked here for about seven months now, but I volunteered since uh, 2019. So I've been around here for a while. Um, and I just really love reptiles. and I love teaching people um, all there is to know about reptiles. So now you got to meet Miss Isabel. Uh, she was the one that showed me around the facility. And uh, these are some Chuck Wallace species that aren't the ones we're focusing on. But as you can tell, they have very, very similar habitats. A big basking spot that all these girls are laying on right now and lots of nooks and crannies to hide. Uh, but again, we're going to be focusing on the common chuckwalla, although I had to take video of the crocodilians as well because they're amazing. Uh, <laughs> so back to the common chucky. This little guy right here is Chucky. He's a common chuckwalla, so he's what you would find here in our deserts here in Arizona. Um, a little fact about Chucky is he was actually um, a rescue. Um, he was found in somebody's backyard. A, somebody's cat attacked him, so he is missing the top of his tail, or the very end of his tail. So it's a little nub right there. Um, so we nursed him back to health, and he's been with us ever since. Um, but Chuck Wallace are um, very cool. They have these um, little air sacs in their body, so when they're really scared, they'll run and hide away from predators, and they'll actually expand their bodies, kind of like a balloon. Uh, not super big, but they can expand their bodies and fit little crevices um, in the desert so that a predator can't pull them out of those crevices. Fantastic, yeah. and I see that you guys have a perfect setup here. Uh, with a nice yes. basking spot if you want to tell us a little bit about their habitat and yeah. how you guys are keeping up with it so you know in captivity we got to make sure that they have a good um, hot spot and cold spot in their enclosure because 
uh, because they are cold-blooded you know they're not like us they can't put on a jacket to get warm so to get warm he has to sit uh, in his little basking spot so we did put a hide um, right above the basking spot or right under the basking spot excuse me um, so he can sit on top of there and get warm or he can go in his hide and still be warm but then he still has a cool part of his enclosure as well um, and we just have more of a dry substrate um, just like some bark chips um, and then here um, we just give them um, mixed greens. Uh, we don't really give them any fruit. They tend to get a little bit overweight if we give them too much fruit. Um, our other um, herbivores can have fruit in their diet, but we just mostly give these guys mixed greens. So. All right, guys, I'm back in the car. Uh, we have a ton of great information from them. Uh, I want to say thank you again to Phoenix Herpetological Society for even letting us in uh, and talking to us about the different enclosures. Um, so I have an idea of where we can head. Um, so we're looking for, like Isabel said, hilly crevices where the chuck walls can dive and cool off in. Uh, and then we're also looking for basking spots. They love the heat. Um, so I have a feeling Piawasta Peak is going to have a ton of chuck wallas. So let's go ahead and head out there and see if we can find some. Let's find some chuck wallas. All right, guys, we're here at the last location of the day. Uh, it's time to fill some chuck wallas. Um, hopefully we get some of those push-up behaviors. If not, I'll have to come out another day and get them on video for the, <laughs> for the project. But um, we're gonna try our best today. Uh, I have a good feeling about this because we're filling all of the gaps that we need for habitat. Um, I'm already seeing on the mountain that there's a lot of rocky crevices, a lot of places for them to hide, um, major, major, major basking spots. The sun is just right to where they would be sitting out and basking right now. So I'm feeling this one. Hopefully we can go. All right, we'll see you guys up there. Hope and there's a beautiful female. This is the first lizard I was able to find. And as you can tell, she wanted nothing to do with me. Um, I don't know if you can see it over there, but that white dot on her nose is salt. They actually blow that out of their nose to regulate their salt within their bodies, which is fairly highly found in the desert. Um, in this female over here, I enticed her out with some flowers. Uh, she's munching on those, as you can tell. Uh, the females do not display that dominance at all. You can tell they just want nothing to do with you. They try to hide as quickly as they can or scurry away as fast as they can. They want nothing to do with humans at all. Um, so we're not gonna see any of those dominant push-up behaviors from the females, but it's a good comparison. Um, this species is actually sexually dimorphic, which means that the females look drastically different than the males. And you'll be able to see that in the later scenes. Um, but just look how pretty she is, just perched up under that rock. That's a nice little cool spot for her. Um, she'll be able to stay nice and cool while the sun is blazing. Uh, and she'll come out a little bit later once it's basking time. And as uh, suspected, she was out during basking time. Uh, next, I actually stumbled upon a smaller male. Um, and although he doesn't have as dominant behaviors like a larger male would, um, he still definitely shows it. He's munching on some flowers I left out for him. Um, and as he notices my camera, he'll start bobbing his head up and down, telling me to back up away from his flowers. And he goes back to chomping, chomping on those flowers. Yeah, if you notice, this is a sexually dimorphic species, which means the males look much different than the females. Um, the female had that kind of yellow splotchy back, and the males have a brighter orange back and a blacker head. Um, he's going to go back to chewing on his flowers there. And I bet once I zoom in again, he's going to go ahead and start bobbing his head. Boom, there he goes again. I climbed down, I remember, and... He got confident again and started showing his territorial display. 
I decided to make up with him, so I hand fed him a flower just just so we're on a good page. And watch how he rips off the flower from the stem. It's incredible. <laughs> So at this point, uh, I decided to climb back down, uh, and I noticed he kind of followed me out. Uh, so I was hoping he was going to show us a dominance display again, but being that he is a smaller male, he just ran away. This is, however, a much larger male, and you'll notice the difference in dominance between larger males and smaller males. Uh, I also laid out some flowers for this guy. And he just bobbed like no other, making sure I was staying away from those flowers. He notices the camera and clearly facing off with it. And directly goes down to the flowers whilst telling me to stay away as he was eating. And even as he's eating, he'll take breaks just to tell me to back up and let him eat. He's telling me that those flowers are his and his only. And there he goes again. At this point, I think he was frustrated that I wasn't leaving while he was eating, so he directly stared into the camera. He was being super cocky, and he had those big jowls. Uh, look at that diamond-shaped head. Those huge jowl, uh, jowls are actually um, part of sexual selection. He's directly looking at the camera and doing his push-ups now, which is a very aggressive display of dominance. And again, directly looking at the camera and hitting that display of dominance. He backs up and looks directly at the camera. He was not afraid of me at all. Uh, so I eventually decided just to leave this guy alone. Lastly, I found this medium-sized male who was pretty confident. He would show displays of dominance as long as he was far away from the camera. Every time I would get closer, he would push away. Here's an example. Look at you, big boy. You got a belly on you. Oh, I didn't mean it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, there you go with your push-ups. Say, get out of my house. You called me fat. push up <laughs> and just like this chuck walla guys i am out